Slicing object must be one of the most satisfying mechanisms in VR. So in today's video, I will have the pleasure to show you how you can do this in Unity. Of course, make sure to like and subscribe down below to not miss the next tutorial, the source code, as well as an exclusive tutorial of how I use this system to recreate Fruit Ninja in VR is available on my Patreon if you want to support the channel. But without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I have already set up a little Unity project. As you can see, I have a red lightsaber following my right hand and a little blue cube on top of a table in front of me. Now, if I leave play mode, as you can see, this is simply done using the default VR rig. And for the saber, I have made it simply by stacking three cylinder and adding a red emissive material for the laser part. By the way, the shiny red effect is created here by a bloom effect on this post-processing game object. As you can see, if I change the intensity, it changed correctly the lighting emissive of the red saber. But here is the problem. If I wanted to cut this blue cube, I need for this to define a plane. And now we need to know the vertices that will be on top or below this plane and use procedural mesh generation based on these two groups to recreate a mesh. But procedural mesh generation is not an easy thing to do. So what we are going to do instead is use a free open source project to do this job called Easy Slice. And there it is. So you can download it using this link. It is made by David Arayan and you can find it on GitHub. To download it, you can simply go to code here and then click on download zip. Once it is downloaded, you can simply navigate to the unzip file and then drag here this Easy Slice folder into Unity. And now, as you can see, you can have a look at it over here. And now we will be able to use this awesome asset to slice this object in half. To do so, let's go back to the saber over there that I have here under my right hand. And I'm going to click on Add Component. We can call this new component Slice Object and double press on Enter to open it. Okay, so in this script, we are going to need, of course, a reference to the Easy Slice asset that we just imported in our project. So let's write using Easy Slice. There you go. And now I'm going to add two reference. First, a public transform that will reference the plane that we have in our scenes. So I can call it plane debug. Then a reference for the target game object that we want to slice. And then I'm going to create a new function, which I can call public void slice. And that will take as a parameter a game object called target. There you go. And now you will see the big magic of the easy slice asset, because we can slice an object simply by doing slice hull, hull equals target dot slice. As you can see, this is an extension of the game object, which allow us to directly slice it with dot slice. And it will only need two things, the plane position and the plane normal. So for the plane position, we can get it with plane debug dot position. And for the plane normal, if we go back, as you can see, it is this green arrow over there that we can call with plane debug dot up. Perfect. And now if the L is not null, this is where we will be able to generate procedurally the mesh that is created by separating here this target game object in half using the plane coordinate. And so we have two hull to create. First, we have the upper hull, which is created by calling hull.createUpperHull and then give it our target. Now we can copy this line and paste it just below. And instead of upper hull, we can call this one lower hull and call instead of create upper hull, create lower hull. There you go. And now that's basically it. Now, the only thing that we need to do is to, of course, test this slice function. So for now, I will simply test it with the press on the escape key on my keyboard. And we can do so by simply going at the top and adding using unity engine dot input system and then calling in the update if keyboard dot current dot space key dot was press this frame and if we press on the space key we want to do slice target there you go and now let's go back to unity and wait for the script to compile okay so if we go to our slice object we need to reference of course the plane debug so for this we can drag this plane over there 
There you go. And for the target, we want here to be our sliceable cube. So let's drag it in the target. And now let's just set it to non maximize over there so that if I click on play, we will be able to see if we can slice this cube in half if I press on the space key on my keyboard. And so let's do this. And as you can see, this has created two new game objects in our scene the upper hull, which is over there, and the lower hull. And so it is already working. We've managed to call the easy slice to correctly cut this blue cube using the plane coordinate. But there is at this point two problems. The first one is that the original game object is staying over here. And of course, we will need to destroy it. And the second issue is that we have here a pink material, which means that a material is missing. So let's see how we can fix this by leaving play mode and going back to our script. Okay, so if we go back to our script, so for the first problem, we can simply fix it by calling destroy target over there in the slice function. And for the missing material, we can actually in the create upper and create lower hull here function, we can add here a material reference that will be used when creating these two parts. So we could actually use the same material that is present on the target, but something else that we can do is use a material that we will reference in this script. And in my case, I'm going to do this by simply doing public material cross section material. There you go. And we can add this cross section material over there at the end of these two function. And now let's save and go back to Unity. There you go. So for this cross section material, in my case, what I'm going to do is go in the material folder and drag the red emissive material that is the same as this one. So the one on my saber and use it for the cross section material when we cut this cube in half. And if I click on play, as you can see, it works. We have now a cool material for the cross section and we have currently destroyed the original game object. But something cool that we can even do is configure the component of these two new game objects. So for example, we can add some physics properties to them and add an initial force to both of them. So let me show you how we can do this. So to do this, let's go in the slice object class. Let's add a new function called public void setup slice component. So this function will need as a parameter the slice object. And so what we can do is first add a rigid body to this slice object by doing rigid body RB equals slice object dot add component of type rigid body. Then of course, because this is a rigid body, it will need a collider. So we can add a mesh collider called collider by doing the same thing, but with add component mesh collider. Now, something weird is that rigid body only works with convex mesh collider. So we need to make sure that collider.convex is set to true. And finally, as I said earlier, we can add a certain force at the start when we set up the slice component so that the game object will move in the opposite direction of the plane. And something that we can do is actually go at the top and add a public float called cut force that we can set initially to 2000. And then in the setup slice component, we can do RB dot add explosion force, cut force, and then the position where we want the explosion force to apply. And in our case, this will be slice object dot transform dot position. And we need to set also an explosion radius. In my case, I think a radius of one will be more than enough. Okay, so now that we finished the setup slice component function, we can of course code it with the two body part here. So after creating the upper hull, we can do setup slice component, upper hull, and now the same, just right here. So setup slice component, lower hull. And there you go. Everything should be ready like this. Now let's go back to Unity to find out what will happen with these changes. Okay, so let me click on play and let's rotate the plane maybe just like this. And now if I press on the space key, as you can see, it works. It correctly cut the blue cube in half and it just moved them both. And as you can see, both of them have a rigid body and a mesh collider, which is convex. And this is how you can tweak and create some new component to the new part that are created when slicing the object.
Okay, so now that we succeeded to make this plane cut the cube, of course, we need to do the same, but make it work in VR. So to do so, let's go back once again to our slice object script. So to make this work in VR, instead of calling here this keyboard function and slicing a target, we need to check the collision between the saber and our environment. And to do so, let's remove both these two reference, and I'm going to add two new transformer reference a public transform called start slice point and a public transform called end slice point. There you go. Now to check the collision between these two points, we can go in the update function, remove here what we add inside. Instead of update, let's write fix update and create a new boolean called as hit. And then here is the magic we can call physics.linecast to check the collision between these two points. And we can first give the first position with start slice point dot position, the second with end slice point dot position. Then we can give it the output, which will be helpful if we find something to hit without recast it, it. And finally, we can add a sliceable layer that will define the element that we can slice. So at the top, let's write public layer mask sliceable layer and add it at the end of the line cast. There you go. Now, if we have hit something, we can get what we hit with game object target equals it dot transform dot game object and call as before the slice function, but this time with this new target. But here is the tricky part because before n, we could simply use the reference of this plane. But now how can we define a plane simply using our saber? And this is our, so be careful. Now, when our plane will move, we can check the velocity in which it is moving, which will be defined in this direction. And then we can check the vector that goes from the start position to the end position. And to set the orientation of the plane to be able to cut an object in that direction, what we can do is actually compute the cross product between this vector and this vector. And this will give us a third vector that is perpendicular to these two and which will be in this direction. And that will be perfect to define a plane that slides the cube. So here is how we can make it. Back to our cube, instead of plane debug here, we can do end slice point, perfect. And now for the normal of the plane, we can first get the velocity of the end slice point by adding at the top a public velocity estimator function that I can call velocity estimator. Now, if you don't know what the velocity estimator is, it is a component that I use in almost all of my projects, which you can find over there. Basically, it estimates the velocity of any game object on a certain number of frame, and you will be able to find this script in the description of this video. So you simply need to import it in your project folder. And then using this velocity estimator, what we can do is vector three velocity equals velocity estimator dot get velocity estimate. And finally, we can get now the plane normal by doing, as I told you before, vector three dot cross and slicing points dot position minus start slice point dot position and of velocity. Perfect. We can of course normalize this plane normal by doing plane normal dot normalize. As this is a normal, we want this vector to have a length of one. And finally, we can use this new plane normal at the end of the slice function over here and everything should be perfect. <laughs> Okay, so now let's go back to Unity to set up all of the components needed. So let's select here our saber. For the start slice points, I'm going to right click on the saber, create empty and call this start slice point. Make sure that you are set to local here to be able to easily place this game object. And we can place it at the start of our laser over there. Now I'm going to duplicate it and this time call it end slice points and we can move it over there at the end of the laser. Perfect. Now on this end slice point, I want to add as a component the velocity estimator. And here, make sure that estimate on awake is enabled. And finally, let's go back to our saber. 
drag the start slice point over there, the end slice point over there, the velocity to be the end slice point, and for the sliceable layer, we can go at the top, click on add layer, and create a new layer called sliceable. And then if we go back to our saber, make sure that the sliceable layer is only set to sliceable. There you go. And now, obviously, we can select our plane that we had before, disable it, and for our sliceable cube, we can set its layer to sliceable. And just like this, everything should be ready. We should be able to slice this cube in VR. So now, let's maximize these windows and click on play to find out. And there you go, if I try to slice the cube with the laser, as you can see, it works. It correctly cut the cube in two. And as you can see, this is working as before, but this time it works in VR. And of course, from here, we can have some fun with the system. So for example, I can duplicate this cube a little bit more and normally everything should still work the same. So let's click on play to find out. And there you go. As you can see, this still works perfectly. And finally, to conclude this tutorial, of course, we make this work with a cube, but this works with any 3D model. But if I drag here this 3D model that I have of the monkey from Blender, and then that I scale it down on top of my table, I can, of course, add a mesh collider, make it convex, and set the layer to be sliceable. I should be able to slice this monkey, but you will see there will be a little problem. As you can see, there is an error. We need to be able to read the 3D mesh to be able to slice this object. And so we can easily fix this if we simply go into the mesh file over there. And then in model, make sure that here the read write is enabled. And now if we go below and click on apply, as you can see, I can cut the cube as before, but I can also cut Suzanne in half. So everything is working. Congratulations. And there you go, guys. This tutorial was super fun to make and I hope you enjoy following along. Now, the source code is available on my Patreon, as you know, where you can find also an exclusive tutorial where I use this system to recreate Fruit Ninja in VR. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.